And I'm thinking about games I've played, like I could say Near Automata, for instance. I did think Great about game. that one too, yeah. Alex, I saw something on Twitter, or X, the everything app, depending on what we want to call it today, just the other day, and it inspired me because I had an answer to this question. Um, and it comes from Idiot Peach. Uh, great name. Great name. Love it. Uh, and at Idiot Peach had asked, what do you feel like is the game everyone has to play once in their lifetime? For me personally, Sly Cooper. I understand this. Um, did you ever play Sly Cooper? Did not. <laughs> oh, I played the Sly Cooper series. I understand. I understand the 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 reason why, because of the idea of being like very stylized uh, platformer that has you know some interesting elements to it. Wouldn't be my choice personally. <laughs> um, but I I did start uh, conjuring up things that I would normally recommend, and the way I took this was not like my favorite game. Because I, I could just say, like, well, these are my favorite games, and everyone should like them. You would say Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, I'm just going to talk about Bioshock. I'm just going to talk about Fallout New Vegas. And while I think that it, it, you, you couldn't go wrong playing those games, I don't think you could go wrong playing those games, I started thinking about the kind of game that I think everyone should experience uh, because of, of what it is that's unique. And at first, I wanted to say it was like Psychonauts. Because I, I do feel like Psychonauts is one of those really interesting, like, wild experiences that you really wouldn't get anywhere else. But I, I did come to another conclusion of the game that I think everybody should play. And so what I'm going to say is... Drumroll, please. Controversial opinion? <laughs> Spiritfarer. I'm gonna say Spiritfarer. Um, you, you're looking at me with a I've not look played Spirit you, Fair. you probably haven't played it and you might not even know what it is I don't know if you have I've heard of it you've heard of it okay um, uh, it's... I can't remember which one it is though. I'll talk about uh, it my mind is going to Journey and I know it's not Journey uh, no it is not Journey it is not Journey uh, Spirit Fair comes from I want to say it's Thunder Lotus um, and it is it's not at all it marketed itself as a cozy game about death it starts off, you are Stella, and you have a little cat named uh, Daffodil, and you are, you have, you have died. And uh, now that Stella has died, you have been given a mission from Sharon, uh, who is the Keeper of the Underworld, to... Uh, I mean, he's a ferryman of the River Styx, if you want to get down to it. Thank you. This actually does lead into the actual term. It's that... Sharon has decided that he is going to be giving the reins of ferrying spirits to the underworld off to Stella now that she's died. The game pretty much revolves around you're on your boat, which is the fairy, essentially, which can expand and grow. In, like, this kind of cozy game, like, builder kind of thing, you put new rooms into the boat as you're going along. Um, the general thing that you do in the game, though, is you uh, take on these anthropomorphic animals that are actually people Stella knew in the real world that had passed before her. Uncles, friends, people that she cared for as, ho as a hospice worker, like all of these things. And they are anthropomorphized as lions and frogs and, and little mushroom guy and like all of this. And going through their stories and making their little houses and, you know, ex expanding your repertoire gets you further into their story as you're going through. And by doing so, you eventually get to the point where you are a where they are able to let go and and pass on and you then ferry them off to uh, their their forever. You, you 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 lead them through the gate and let them go off. The reason why um, I say that this is the kind of game everyone should play, but just the once, is that it is incredibly uh, effective at the kind of storytelling that does um, as you journey through every single one of these characters' storylines and then lead them to the end of their journey, while also kind of understanding and expanding, like, 
the the character arc of what Stella's going through and what that all means. And it's a very effectual game in a way that a lot of games don't do this, while also being really beautiful to look at in this hand-drawn art style, and also having a lot of really nice locations where you're like in 2D environments and and learn all of these other little skills. But it's just a a very singular experience. Um, that I, I don't think you can really find anywhere else and would be the kind of thing that I think everyone should experience or at least just play the once just to, to see it because by the end I was, I was just emotionally drained from the experience of playing Spirit Fair. Well, that doesn't make me want to play. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it's very rare that games do that. Uh, where where you just get to the end and you're like, I'm out. I can't. I gotta sit back and think about this for a second. I gotta think. Yeah. Especially with with the fact that it is a game where it's it starts where you're dead. Like I love the fact that mm -hmm. the game starts where your protagonist is dead, and then is uh, very like light and positive throughout the entire game. It's not dreary. It's not morose. It's about celebration of life that leads you to the end of the game. And I think that, that the way that they did that was so juxtaposed to what you normally think of when it comes to the river sticks and the, and the, and the world that they create. That's the reason why I would specifically suggest that it's, it's the kind of game I feel everyone should play once in their lifetime. It's just a very specific kind of game that you'd want to play. Uh, I can't remember exactly how long it takes. If you didn't want to interact with all the systems where you're doing the gardening and the the uh, manufacturing stuff on the boat, and you just wanted to do more of the uh, individual storylines for the things, it's probably maybe a 10 or 12 hour game. With the other stuff, if you want to explore and do some fun things, which I would suggest, it's probably closer to 20. If you were looking for something to play and you wanted to try it just the one time, I, I think you will at least appreciate it. Even if you don't necessarily like it, I think you will appreciate that you played it. As like, almost like, Think of it as like the required reading. <laughs> like this is like it's a good it's a good game to talk about framework of uh of, of setting up narrative in terms of the way the story is is um laid out. Do you have an example you would like to give? I've been trying to think of this and I've thought of a bunch of different games that I think are good games, but like then I go, is this something I feel everyone should play? Like you could be like, alright, well StarCraft was revolutionary sure at the time for instance or diablo right you go like oh the sims that was a game that you know minecraft these are just games that are huge and have a lot of notoriety to them right and i wouldn't always pick a popular game anyways because they have a lot of like impact on games sure but sure. they're not singular experiences they're not sure. games that kind of make you sit or anything like right. that. Not that you need a game that can make you sit back and think. That's not always right. what people want. And then I'm thinking about games I've played, like I could say Near Automata, for instance. I did think great about game. that one too, yeah. It's a great game in the way they tell the story, but not everyone wants a post-apocalyptic, you know, very, very he heady game with like all these different aspects it's... of psychology and stuff going on. You know? Near Near Automata is a an excellent game. It is it is, it is. a lot though. I will give you this. It mm. is a lot to take in um for people who are not ready for it. <laughs> like yeah. I would I would love if more people played it, but I also feel like it's not necessarily something I would recommend to just anyone as yeah. something you should try. Yeah is something you should on try. On the flip side, as I was thinking, my mind wandered back to uh, the games by Crystal Dynamics of mm -hmm. Legacy of Kane. It's not just one game, unfortunately, because if you want the experience, you would need to play at least three of them. Hmm. But it would be Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver 1, and Soul Reaver 2, and then uh, Legacy of Kane, Defiance. I have played Defiance. Did you play games. Soul Reaver 1 and 2 at all? I did not. Okay. They go more in-depth on Raziel's backstory. Sure. In those ones, because they came before, so it's like... Uh, Soul Reaver 1 starts with... The, the opening cinematic is... Raziel grows a pair of wings! Kane doesn't like it, 
throws him into the fucking abyss. Yep. Which I'm sure you've seen Yeah. something of. I, I and and so yeah. Raziel gets Resonance Wraith, he comes back, and the the game is written so well, narrated so well. And it's from the era of like puzzle game hack and slash like early God of War style gameplay. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just the writing and narrative and lore stuff they do in it is so good. Yeah. And if you want a what is it? They the people are like it's almost like Shakespearean in its dialogue. Oh sure, yeah. We've said before or that kind of dramatic mm. um, prose in the way they, they they do the writing and narratives. It's yeah. so well done. And it, it's if you want a vampire narrative that is good with full yeah. of intrigue and plot twists and shenanigans of time travel, it's like it's got so many good things going on in it. Yeah. And then, you know, through Soul Reaver, Kane is your antagonist the whole time. Yeah. And like you, you said you played Defiance, so like we can yes. we can riff off that. Did you finish Defiance? Oh yes, <clears throat> yes I did. I did. I did you play it on PC? Because I know there's a port of it on the PC. No, now. no, no. I would have played it on uh, original Xbox. I think, yeah. Um, so if you've played that through to conclusion, then you understand that, you know, not everything is as it seems. Mm. Like between Raziel and Kane. Sure. Raziel's like, Kane's kind of a bastard, and Kane's like, you're not really my enemy, Raziel. We're after the same thing, dude. Right. And Raziel has to go through this journey of growth and finding things out of his own to realize, oh shit, yeah, I guess Kane's on the right page. Right, um, right, right. And like, until at the end, Raziel goes, yeah, I'm gonna sacrifice my life to give Kane the weapon he needs to basically kill an elder god. Yeah. You know? So it's very poetic in its nature. It's just really, like, again, narratives are important and amazing when they're done right, and this had such just a great narrative through the entire thing sure um but there's also fun little plot twists in there where you get information on this one character that your other characters and have because defiance you play as both raziel and kane through different sections of the game yes and they're nowhere near each other for most of it and i think mm -hmm. there's one point in time this is my favorite fucking thing in gaming that they ever did there is that one fight i think it's at the avernus cathedral where you go at you go in as Kane and you meet with Raziel and it mm. sparks a boss fight. Mm. You know. So you have to fight Raziel as Kane. Yes. And then as soon as that part of the fight is done, it goes into a phase two, but suddenly your perspective has changed. So yeah. you're now Raziel fighting Kane. Fighting Kane, yeah. So you fight this boss fight from both sides. Yeah. Those games are good examples of doing like perspective of your character growth uh from that battle alone where you're kind of like seeing both sides of, of the story and that that series is interesting because Raziel and Kane are both looking at this world in very different ways while you're playing through that series so uh, you know if you're looking for more in-depth like character development and narrative structure I think that they're really good for that um, but they're also really good just platformer games like action platformer games yeah um, and a slight puzzle but a little not bit. as much but action platformer for sure a little bit yeah um it definitely has aged a bit yeah it's it's a bit rougher now trying to go back to it especially because the pc port as i said for defiance is not great um right. i would love to see them remastered like i had said originally i was thinking maybe i'd i'd pick like a psychonauts just because i think that what they did for level design and the innovation there was so interesting that it it should spark a lot of innovation there's there's like there's a whole level in the original Psychonauts called Lungfishopolis, where you get you go inside the brain of a lungfish, and Lung and because the lungfish, yeah, why since you have gone inside the head of a lungfish that you just defeated in the real world in a battle, the lungfish now sees you as this big scary monster, and so you're like a kaiju stomping around the city of Lungfishopolis, totally crazy level designs that they came up with for that the milkman conspiracy that just like twists itself around on itself 
the theater level. Uh, you know, th there's just so many great, and uh, Psychonauts 2 expanded upon that greatly um, with going inside these people's heads and trying to figure out how they perceive the world. We definitely wasn't focusing on, like, the gameplay itself for, like, Legacy of King. Um, yeah. The what gameplay is, is fine. The, the the battle, the combat, and the platforming is fine. It's a product of mm -hmm. its time. It, it's got fixed camera angles a lot of times for some of them. Yeah. Um, the gameplay is fine. Again, it's, it's nothing. The gameplay is nothing to write home about. It is the the way that the narrative is done. Such a good, such a fascinating, well and complex story that is just narrated by amazing voice actors and mm. written so well. And it's like yeah. you don't see games done that way anymore. Even Baldur's Gate three, which had amazing voice acting, and plot hooks, in all the lines yes. that. That was not even that's that's a multi hundred hour game, you know. Mm. I haven't finished it many times the length of uh, Legacy of Game, mm -hmm. but it's got mm -hmm. so many different ways it can go. So it's it's not that I'm gonna say it's bad writing because it's not bad writing, but it's not a singular story told in a specific way. It is a yeah. choose your own adventure game that can go so many different ways for every different person. You can have very different experiences. And well, yes, you can have very different experiences in playing Legacy of Kane. You're mm. always going to come to the same outcome of the story. It's always going to tell you the exact same story. Yeah. And so yeah. it's much more of an experience that everyone can get the same outcome from. Whereas yeah. if you and I compare playthroughs of Baldur's Gate, we're going to be like, oh yeah, I totally. I slaughtered the goblin camp. What'd you do? Oh, I befriended like all the goblins, and they're my minions they now. They were super on. happy. Yeah, yeah. I liked them. <clears throat> yeah. It's like, okay, well, that's very different. Games of that caliber, with the voice acting and narration, that in the in their monologues and the lore and storytelling that we get these days, mm -hmm. don't don't match at all. It's so right. rare to get a game that tells you a story. And you sit mm -hmm. there going, I want to know more. Especially right. for me. I get bored when you lore dump me. And this game has cutscenes that are just lore dumps. Yeah. But they're interesting. And they're in yeah. character monologues inside Raziel talking about this thing he's looking at and why it's interesting and what it might mean. And you're going, Yeah, actually, I'm curious what this fucking thing on the wall means. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Or you go, wait, this might be that. That looks similar to the other thing. And it's like, okay, well, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I uh, I understand that as far as, you know, creating a narrative and story structure. Um, it's tricky because, like, when the question, uh, you know, hit my head, I'm like, I'd like to be able to recommend something that might be outside people's wheelhouses that you know, they they'd enjoy. I think that the Legacy of Kane series, especially for players now, is one that they wouldn't have necessarily hit. Um, Spirit Fair, I feel, is just one of those games that fell under the radar for a lot of folks, so they wouldn't have played it. Um, but there's you know there's a lot of example. I, I I keep thinking to myself like Burnout Three is one of those games where even if you're not ra a racing fan, I think that you'd go through the first race of Burnout Three and kind of go, how did they get this sense of speed? How did we get this sense of adrenaline going through that eventually became a a hallmark of not just that series, but that they definitely used in other series past that of like the crash mode and the the takedown mode where you're smashing into other cars and they're they're flying off the road and this big kind of like budget like michael bass style constant like <laughs> like like racing thing they're they're the kinds of things that you just don't feel like most players would normally experience and that they should for just one moment in time um but uh yeah very interesting question a lot of really interesting experience uh, like uh responses to it uh persona 3 came up uh fall at new vegas came up a couple times mass effect half-life outer wilds kingdom Hearts i was thinking 3. outer wilds too but again i could just say i feel like you should experience outer wilds maybe not play Outer Wilds. For me. yeah that that again is one of those things which is it's not necessarily something that most people can play because of its structure um people mention 
Bioshock, people mentioned Metal Gear. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, I, I was sitting here thinking I could pick any number of games that are super incredibly popular that people will say. And I was like, yes. as I said, you, I was like, if you're just picking games you liked, you would pick Bioshock, for instance. I'd, I'd, put, I'd, put, I'd say, yeah, sure, everybody should play Deus Ex. Hmm. Yeah, or, they or could, Mass totally Effect. should. But these, are, but these but, are just games that got incredibly popular and have huge fan bases. Sure. <clears throat> and yeah. I, I think your answer of Spirit Fair, for the reasons you gave, is a much better answer than saying, oh, yeah, well, Bioshock Infinite was a, the greatest storytelling game of all time or whatever like that. It's like, okay. And I love well, Bioshock Infinite. I did. Yeah. But still, yeah. I, mm. Still. <laughs> Just yeah. in general. And, and like, yeah. I love, you know, the original StarCraft and I love Diablo and it's like oh, all the other yeah. games I love too. But no, uh, okay. as much, and I absolutely love Legacy of Keen. Mm-hmm. But. Ultimately, I picked that because I figured that's a game not as many people would have played. No, no, especially now, especially now, especially and it would be worth tw- going twenty-five to. years later. Maybe. I think, um, yeah. Are you thinking about going back to it? <laughs> I have it on PC. Yeah, I I have. I think I have Defiance on PC so I could play it again. But I think I also picked up Soul Reaver Two. I want to say maybe Soul Reaver 2. Yeah, I never again, that, they're a little bit rougher to go back to. I think you, I think Soul yeah. Reaver 1 and 2 are there. But story-wise, if you can get through the PS1, PS2 era style and mm. the gameplay of it, the jank yeah. of it, story-wise, those games are so good. Yeah. Because because yeah. Raziel starts off with just being like, fuck, yeah. I'm dead. I'm undead. Yeah. I'm a soul drinker now. And he has to gain all the different powers, and I, I won't spoil that for you if you're going to go back and play it. I guess the question that I would ask for everybody is, um, you know, the game that everyone has to play once in their lifetime is good. I, I guess that I would try to just define that a little bit better as uh, the game that you think everybody should uh, should experience. Because I think... I, I think that it's really more of the experience because there are some games that I could probably list that I don't actually like that I still feel that people should probably experience at least once. I didn't really gel with Dark Souls, but I would totally understand that people should probably try it. Like, you know, I get that, you know, uh, just to just to understand, to inspire, because there's a lot of games that have done really interesting things in the past that just don't get utilized anymore they don't do it the same way anymore um that would be interesting to inspire generations forward so yeah what do you think is the game that people should experience once in their lifetime you can let us know bonus Uh, points if you pick something not popular bonus points if you pick something that is not like the the obvious top 10 games of all time (laughs) don't pick breath of the wild people already play that don't pick. I, I saw Ocarina of Time in here too, and it's like, yeah, no, I, I get it. That's obviously a. People don't want to play that. They have to do the Water Temple. <laughs> yeah, like let's let's assume that people have played like really popular games. Okay, past that, like what what's one of the more like obscure ones that people probably should have? As I said, bonus yeah. points for obscure titles. Yeah, bonus points. And, and I guess I guess neither of ours were truly obscure titles but. not truly obscure but i doubt that people would have normally went to them uh i don't i don't think either of our selections were like in the responses <laughs> as far as i can tell so but at any rate uh yeah let us know in the comments down below